Hey y'all, you got the Bulldog on the channel. Got a Ford F-150 here, I'm not sure of the year. I will put it in the description. But at, this is now the 13th of February. Uh, we just got the part that we ordered back in October or November. That's how high a demand they're in and then they're in short supply. What it is, is lead frame for the transmission. I'm going to be pulling the pan there, pulling the valve body out of it, and you'll get to see me disassemble it out there on the bench. Uh, and I'll explain how that all works as I go. But basically, the older transmissions, they had a solenoid and a solenoid and a solenoid and a solenoid, and they were all separate. That's what they used to turn the torque converter off and on. They'd shift one, two shift solenoid, two, three shift solenoid. You know, the, the different ways the electronic shift worked in the transmission. And then it had uh, pulse modulated with solenoid. And then it had the input shaft speed sensor, the turbine sensor. And then the output shaft speed sensor. And it would measure the difference between those two. And that's the slippage of the transmission. All that. And they were all different parts. Because one part goes bad at a time. That's kind of how things work usually. Well, they decided they weren't going to need that anymore. They put everything into one. And it is all one big chunk of plastic. And it's got heavy, instead of a wiring harness that's inside the transmission, it has uh, heavy strips of metal and they're inside the plastic moldings of this thing. And they have molded the speed sensors into this big plastic thing and the solenoids clip into it. So if any one part goes wrong, you have to buy the whole thing. So if you got a speed sensor go, go bad, lead frame. If you have uh, the power to one shift solenoid go bad, lead frame. If you have an output shaft speed sensor go bad, lead frame. If you, your Prindle goes bad, the, that Ford that we just did, here the other day with the wiring harness that was burned up and it wouldn't start. That was because the Prindle was not getting the signal to the computer to say that it was in park or neutral, so the truck wouldn't start. Well, it has the same switch inside this transmission, only it's part of this lead frame. If that goes bad, lead frame. So I'm gonna drop this pan tonight so that it can sit there and drain all the fluid out overnight and makes it easier putting everything back in that way. And We've got the part sitting here, and we'll be assembling it uh, after I show you, you know, what's inside there. Okay, all that'll have to come down. There are certain bolts you pull, certain ones you don't. There's part of the lead frame right there that's sticking down, but it bolts on top of the valve body. So you have to take the valve body out in order to change it, which is convenient. Whenever you pull a pan down, always take a look at it. This one looks really good. It's nice and clean inside. And on the low spots, there's no clutch mud. It's a, it's a gooey substance, a little bit dark colored, and that's the clutches that grind up in the fluid. Uh, we don't see any clutch mud in it. There's our magnet. There's just a freckle of stuff on there. A little bit is normal, but uh, you see the magnet is not ballooned up really bad. That's a good sign. Now, before you go ripping the valve body down, you gotta unplug it. This thing here, you just reach up, rotate it unplugged but you have to pull this thing out because it hooked to hooks to the valve body inside okay there's a tab on the back side push it forward and then pull it down and then this piece will pull out the back it 
Now, certain bolts you leave, certain bolts you take out in order to pull that main control down. Here's a diagram of the ones that you drop in order to get that thing out. Pause and note them. Also, there is a valve that sits on top of that thing. It might be a little bit fun putting back in there, but we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Now, when you get ready to come out, you need to be mindful of the shifter because it will try to hang up on you. Now, the reason I wanted to get this thing out tonight is I think just sitting there pouring fluid out of it. It's not fun to try to work it underneath something that's raining on you. So get it out and that can, thing can drain all night long. I'll do this in the morning, but this is what you see. Now, this valve that I told you about here it sits and putting that back up in there sometimes is a little bit fun. We've got a special grease that's really tacky. You stick it back up in place and hold it there and uh, it dissolves when it hits the tranny fluid. You can use Vaseline. That's the poor man's method that I used for years. Nothing wrong with it. It's just not quite as tacky. These two pipes here are stand pipes for oil. They come off. If they can still stay stuck there, maybe they're good. I don't know. Better to have it up in the transmission so you're not catching something. But here is the lead frame. Big gaudy piece of junk with the Prindle switch here. Input shaft speed sensor. I think that's the output shaft speed sensor. I think it has a trans temp sensor in it also. And then all of the uh, solenoids that you saw on the bottom are ganged across the back side of here. And the plug in, of course. But that thing pops right into the back right there. And you pull it out and you can drop the thing straight down. Uh, the shifter reaches down in here and grabs this manual shift valve. So you have to be very careful when you put it back in to make sure all that gets lined up. Another reason to have all the oil drained out of it so you're not fighting that too. Okay, this thing is bolted on from the other side. So we'll have to turn it upside down in order to get all this stuff sticking out the bottom and you don't want to mess that up. So what I do is I just get a cardboard box, turn it upside down on top of that cardboard box. Okay, certain bolts come out, of course, and certain ones don't. So I advise you, after you turn this over, you can't see it, but you just go get your new part and set it there, you know, kind of next to it. And you'll be able to figure out which ones you're gonna pull out and which ones you don't. Now there's a torque spec and a sequence for the bolts that hold that lead frame in. Here's the sequence. 53 inch pounds is the torque spec. Something that was not on the old one. There is a foam gasket that is separate that you buy that they want put right here. And I, it's not on here and it's not on the old one over there, but they sold it to us. They say you're supposed to put this in here and we've always done that too. There's alignment pins here and here so you don't you know, get everything crooked, but you gotta make sure you get your Prindle lined up with your manual valve. Press it up into it by hand. Don't pull it in so that you make sure you're not binding anywhere. Now, you can zip these down with a tool. 
long as you know your limitations. Now we'll torque them in sequence. Now there is a torque sequence to the valve body bolts as well. Here it is, and they torque to 71 inch pounds. This part here goes up in a hole right above this area. And you might be able to see, no, you don't. But this sits in here like this. So it has to stick up into a hole and you have to push against the spring while you're tightening it up, which is a little bit fun. Don't forget when you're putting that thing up in there, make sure that you don't miss your manual shifter here because that lines up with the lever that goes to the outside of the transmission for the manual shift valve. Now this one here is pretty simple because all the long bolts are the same length and your three short ones that go across the back are the only short ones. But be very careful when you're working on a transmission because Valve body bolts are oftentimes several different lengths and you have to go back in the exact spot. So make a note of that when you're working on something different. These, you know, pretty self-explanatory since they're all the same. I've got this stuff here, the green tacky stuff. You smear that all over the component you're trying to stick up in there and hold and it'll hold it in place so that you can get it installed and won't fall out. And this stuff, whenever it gets hot, it'll just dissolve so it doesn't hurt to use it inside the transmission. That's what it's designed for. Before you go up in there, make sure that screen is in place also. Now, before you put this thing up in place, word of warning, Make sure this lock works correctly. On this one we just got, these metal prongs that slide up and lock this piece into place. A little tab you squeeze and pull it down. Where, where they lock in right there, they were caught on a piece of plastic flashing and it would not go up. I had to reach in from the back side and push that prong forward on both sides while wiggling around on the bottom to make that thing lock up into place. Then I had to pull it back down without pulling it down too far and put this piece in and then lock it up in place. That, that made me happy. No, it didn't. Now you've missed me putting this thing up in place because this thing has set to here for 18 hours and it's still pouring oil out every time you move it. Uh, I was not in a good mood. Every time you turn around, it pours a little bit more oil out and dribbles all over you. Runs down inside your shirt. Because screw you, that's why. Every time you turn around, that uh, bypass valve tries to fall out because more fluid is continuously flowing down out of the transmission and dissolving the goo. Is it sticky?
make sure you check this manual valve, make sure you're not hanging it up. Again, there's a sequence to it. I'm gonna try to run them down you know, pretty evenly before you torque them. I can feel it hit. Get a couple, three of them where they touch the surface. It feels funny because you're pushing against a spring up there and then these rubber deals compress a little bit too. I popped them off and put them up in the hole because there was no way I was going to get them lined up. All right, you reinstall your sleeve right here, lock it in, and then we'll put our oil filter in. We got a new one. And then here's the stupid dipstick. Comes with a nut off the top of that instead of having a dipstick tube. And then we refill it, which is uh, an adventure all in of itself. Okay, put a new filter in it. Got the pan back on, and now we pull the oil fill right up here. It's got that little plastic dipstick under it. Filling these things is not fun. Uh, these Ford six speeds are not user friendly, really, but it is what it is. It takes Mercon LV fluid. Uh, you can get it, you know, in several different places. I would not use multi vehicle, but. That's my personal preference. You can use what you want, uh, especially if I don't have to work on it later. Uh, we're going to fill this thing up, have it running, run the gears, check it again, and then call it good. All right, test drive complete. Truck took 10 quarts of Mercon LV exactly, and then we checked. Last three or four of them we've done, it's taken exactly 10 quarts. But you have to have it running after you put in about six start it up and put in the last four while it's running shift the gears but right there next to that exhaust it's going to get hot so you don't need to be quick about it but you, you got to be a little bit on the ball like comment subscribe hit your little bell notification share it all around we'll talk to you later